Tonight on Y News. Embassy of the Philippines confirms Filipinos among the injured in the Grenfell Tower fire in London, United Kingdom. The Armed Forces of the Philippines guarantees no bombing of mosques in Marawi City. The Solicitor General asked the Supreme Court to allow the government to impose martial law in Mindanao as oral arguments on the petitions continue. Lawmakers scrutinized clearer and detailed CCTV videos of the attack in Resorts World Manila during a house probe today. The Department of Health eyes the banning of vape or e-cigarettes in public places. And the Department of Labor calls on government agencies and civil organizations to strengthen the fight against child labor. Why News begins now. TV News and Rescue Command Center. This is Y News with Angelo Castro III and Darlene Basingan. Good evening. The Resorts World Manila presented before lawmakers in the House of Representatives a more complete version of the CCTV footage taken last June 1 and 2 during the attack. Joyce Balancho will tell us why. presentation at the hearing today, lawmakers watched a clearer and more detailed videos of the Resorts World tragic attack, which showed how the lone gunman, Jesse Carlos, executed his plans and to which directions the people run to escape the incident. The videos could have been used to immediately arrest the suspect and save those people who suffocated from the fire and smoke. But the personnel from the hotel casino abandoned their posts in the CCTV room, fearing that the lone attacker would also target them. Yung mga tao nyo nasa loob sila ng room na ito. By the time si ho, kasi nakita kong nag-approach, they have already evacuated their CCTV room. They, they left the CCTV room at what time? Tw around 12.20 ho, they evacuated the, CC the main CCTV room. This is conflicting to what Stephen Riley, the Chief Operating Officer of the Resorts World, said during the hearing. He maintained a security official of the casino and one police officer were monitoring the event the entire time. PNP Chief Ronald De La Rosa rebutted and said PNP did not have access to the CCTV room. Where is your CCTV room? I want to monitor the situation. And he told me, uh, wala na sir, uh, inibakwit namin, wala na tao doon kasi malakas ang usok. Lawmakers also slammed the PNP for not using the CCTV room as the command post where they could have monitored all events happening around. What you needed was real-time information yes. on saan? And the only, the only way you could get that was the information that the cameras could feed you and where could you put that? San? Sa surveillance room where at 1.44, andun na. PNP personnel were already in command and assisted by the Resort World Management. Tama po yan. Uh, I personally asked for the CCTV rooms no? dun, sa, dun sa Resort World. Uh, the answer was, uh, the answer I was given was, mausok na yung CCTV rooms dun sa Resorts World at hindi na pwedeng pasukin at wala na pong tao doon. Meanwhile, Maria Grace Rayala, the lady security guard from the Hotel Casino also faced the inquiry and admitted that she also fled and escaped the attacker. Congressmen also questioned why a holding room was not put up for the evacuees. Majority Leader Congressman Rudy Farina said responding authorities could have gotten more information from witnesses and have prevented anyone possibly involved in the attack from escaping. PNP Chief Ronald De La Rosa, meanwhile, was confronted by Committee Chair Congressman Gustam Bunting for allegedly giving wrong information to the public when he said there was only one casualty in the attack. Hindi po ba dapat na bago ho ka tayo magbitaw, eh, verificado at masigurado po natin na talagang yun lang? Initially, Your Honor, that was our finding. 
uh, hindi pa kasi nakita yung ibang patay. So, tunayalong ako, ilan patay, I was not lying when I said that uh, isa lang talaga. Dahil isa lang talaga namang nakita namin. After nine hours, the House of Representatives finally adjourned its hearing. It will be continued next week and Mr. David Chua, the chair of the Travelers Hotel Group Incorporated owning the Resorts World, is expected to attend after the lower house ordered for a subpoena to be issued to him. Joyce Balancho, UNCV News and Rescue, House of Representatives. The Armed Forces of the Philippines assures that there will be no bombing of mosques in Marawi City. Rosalie Cos tells us why. The ISIS-inspired terrorist groups are holed up in four barangays in Marawi City and among the places they seek refuge at are mosques. They use these places as nests for their machine guns and snipers, defensive positions and arsenals. However, the Armed Forces of the Philippines ensures that they will not bomb this place as well as the other cultural and heritage sites. We categorically state that we have not bombed and will not bomb most in Marawi. The Armed Forces leadership is firm in its commitment to use other options that would flush out this uh, mounted Daesh-inspired group from these places of worship. The military also say they will not go down to the level of the terrorist. The AFP assures our Muslim brothers and Islamic faithfuls that it will not go down to the level of these terrorists who desecrate places of worship to lure government security forces into responding to their violent activities in a similar manner. Meanwhile, the joint patrols of Malaysia, Indonesia and the Philippines will be launched on June 19. This aims to enhance the border patrol of the three countries to prevent the threat of terrorism and other transnational crimes. Uh, there's a bigger issue uh, on the threat coming from uh, the Daesh. So that becomes more relevant uh, to have these trilateral patrols. In the end, the government appeals to everyone to set aside politics to once and for all defeat terrorism and ensure security and peace in the country. Our sovereignty is being confronted and I believe it's time to set aside petty politics and uh, things that uh, separate us. Uh, it's, it's, it's really high time and I believe it's a call to the, Fili to the Filipino nation to be able to stand together as one. It's high time we do that. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanang. The Department of Tourism believes it can still achieve its target of 7 million tourist arrivals this year. Amid existing threats of terrorism, particularly of the Maute ISIS group in Marawi City. Nel Maribohok explains why. Several stakeholders in the tourism industry are experiencing the impact of the travel advisories issued by other countries due to threats of terrorism in the Philippines. Nevertheless, the Philippine Hotel Owners Association says the travel advisories have minimal effect to the industry, noting that they can still recover the revenues lost due to threats of terrorism. It's a temporary setback, but mm. then uh, the hotels are very uh, resilient to this and they look for new markets that mm. they can fill up the, the rooms with and um, aggressive marketing. Despite this, the Department of Tourism or DOT believes it can still achieve its target of 7 million tourist arrivals this year. If we do the math, another 10% would be 6.6 .6, but we want to do 7 million. Mm -hmm. Only because uh, it should be renewed uh, relationship with China. The DOT explains data shows that after the Davao market bombing in 2016, the number of tourist arrivals even increased in February, higher than that of last year. Many of the arrivals, DOT says, came from South Korea and the United States. We have reason to believe that people feel safe, especially when there's extra security, and they come. DOT is now coordinating with authorities to strengthen the enforcement of security measures, especially for tourists visiting the country. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Pasay City. The Chief of the United States Pacific Fleet, Admiral Scott Swift, is now in the Philippines. The U.S. Embassy in the Philippines says the visit of Admiral Swift is part of the move to further strengthen the ties between the U.S. Navy and the Armed Forces of the Philippines. Admiral Swift is expected to leave the country tomorrow. 
The U.S. Embassy assures that Washington supports the efforts of the Philippines in improving its capabilities in fighting terrorism, transnational crimes, piracy, as well as its efforts in disaster response preparedness. As the Supreme Court resumed today's oral arguments on martial law petitions, Solicitor General Jose Calida has asked the justices to allow the government to impose martial law in Mindanao. Meanwhile, the court requested Defense Secretary Delphine Lorenzana and AFP Chief of Staff General Eduardo Añu to attend the hearing tomorrow. Roderick Mendoza will tell us why. During today's hearing, Solicitor General Jose Calida appealed to the justices to allow the imposition of martial law in Mindanao. He says that with the declaration of martial law, the grand plan of Maute and its allies to overrun Marawi City and establish an ISIS province in Mindanao has been thwarted. He adds, there is nothing to fear with the proclamation of President Rodrigo Duterte because its aim is to ensure public safety. Your Honors, these are trying times. We are at a war with an enemy that does, that does not respect the laws and principles we live by. We are at a war with an enemy that seeks to destroy our way of life and force its twisted ide ideology upon our people. It's go in territory and establish a caliphate in Mindanao in allegiance with ISIS cohorts who continue to sow terror worldwide. For Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno, the court needs to rule correctly and provide guidelines to clarify the issues. At the resumption of oral arguments today, justices and counsels continue to debate on whether there is an actual rebellion in Marawi City which would justify the imposition of martial law. So we need to find out how we can get out of this emergency situation by trying to define for the president with all due respect, what can be done and what cannot be done. But according to Albay Representative Ed Selagman, they doubt that there will be no abuses. Is it possible that one of the motivations for filing these petitions was because of the fear, the apprehension, that this president might abuse the powers of martial law? Yes, Your Honor, that is a part of uh, our petition, the, the apprehension that despite the safeguards in the Constitution, the, the safeguards may be violated by a president who may not respect the law and the Constitution. And Former lawmaker Neri Colmenares says they are hoping that the court will limit the scope of martial law to Marawi City. We really hope the Supreme Court will decide not to allow, kung i-allow Manila ang martial law sa Marawi at the very least, huwag nilang i-allow na ma-impose ito sa buong Mindanao. Meanwhile, the Supreme Court requested Defense Secretary Delphine Lorenzana and AFP Chief of Staff General Eduardo Año to attend the hearing tomorrow and brief the justices on the situation in Marawi. Kalida suggested that this be done in an executive session due to sensitive information. Sereno required Kalida to submit a formal manifestation and indicate the level of confidentiality of the information. Roderick Mendoza, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. The Armed Forces of the Philippines, or AFP, is confident that defense and military chiefs can answer the questions of Supreme Court justices regarding President Rodrigo Duterte's declaration of martial law in Mindanao. AFP spokesperson Brigadier General Restituto Padilla says military officials are prepared to face the Supreme Court. Whatever is required, we will provide. General Año in particular is, yes. he, is if ready he is to requested be... by the Supreme Court, I guess the, the Chief of Staff himself and the Secretary of Defense himself will be there to talk about and discuss whatever it is that the justices may want. To are you the Department of Transportation is likely to implement in July the revised provisions of the anti-distracted driving law, particularly the regulations pertaining to the use of cell phones or other gadgets while driving. Under the revised IRR, gadgets of drivers must be positioned four inches away from the dashboard. 
DOTR clarifies that the law covers communication devices only and not other car accessories that might affect the line of sight of a driver. The Transportation Department targets to publish the revised rules and regulations in newspapers tomorrow and to implement it on July 1. We will um, give a copy to the publication, to the newspaper po. Um, barring any glitch, it will be published tomorrow. We will inform our media partners once it is published and then uh, we will give out an info blast that it's definitely being published on a particular day para po ma-heads up namin kayo kung ano yung 15 days after that. The management of the Metro Rail Transit advises train passengers to expect longer lines and slower travel time of trains until Sunday as MRT Line 3 will limit its operation in the next four days. Joe Anano explains why. From 20 train sets operating during peak hours, only 15 train sets are now being used for the operations of MRT Line 3. Aside from the limited number of trains, train speed limit will be lowered to 20 km per hour from the previous 40 km per hour. This means the previous 35-minute end-to-end travel of trains will now become 50 minutes. Officials of MRT explained the limited operation is due to the systematic check they have to conduct on the trains. This is after they discovered last night unusual sound and a regular run of one of MRT trains. They also discovered cracks in one of the axles or a part attached to the wheels of trains. They began to check na this uh, is probably not to happen again to the other train. So we need to inspect all the things. Uh, that's part of a uh, safety procedure. If uh, there's something wrong with the train, we have to assume na that uh, uh, I mean, uh, you have to undergo a bit of process of checking the train. Para para na kasi yung aming train, di ba? Uh, so you need to check all kahit sa isa lang nangyari. The MRT management estimates that 30% of their passenger capacity will be affected by the limited operation. It says it is the first time they have noticed such a problem, prompting them to examine all trains to ensure the safety of passengers. The management of MRT has apologized to the passenger, but many MRT passengers are still dismayed. Nagmamadali tayo, pupunta tayo ng trabaho. Kailangan natin mag-MRT pala, kaya nga tayo sasakay dyan para kaya ano, walang traffic. Kung titignan mo, di ba, may dumadaan na bagon, hindi na nga magkasa yung mga tao eh. Kung babawasan pa. Hindi ka mawala ng tao. Nagabol nga ng oras eh, tapos magbabawasan pa. Despite this, the MRT assures the public of completing the system check until Monday so operations would return to normal on Monday. Joan Nano, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Embassy of the Philippines assures relatives of Filipinos affected in the massive fire in London that the government is doing its best to monitor the condition and safety of our compatriots after the incident. Jovic Bermas is in London, United Kingdom to tell us why, live. Yes, Jovic, go ahead. Good evening, Darlene. The Philippine Embassy here in London has confirmed that Filipinos are among those injured and affected by the fire at the 24-story residential tower in Lancaster West North Estate in North Kensington. As posted in the embassy's official Facebook page, a number of them are in the emergency shelters at St. Clement's Church, the St. Francis of Assisi Church, and the Portobello Rugby Club on Walmer. Earlier today, embassy personnel have gone to the shelters to check on the conditions of our compatriots who have been affected by the fire. Consul General Senen Mangalili assures that they have been in constant coordination with the authorities in determining whether there are Filipinos who got injured in the incident. Definitely, may mga Pilipino na katera don sa building. Ang ginagawa ng embahada ngayon, binibisita natin yung mga evacuation centers para matiyak kung hindi yung mga nandoon don. Ang balita ay may mga Pilipino na dala na sa hospital because of smoke, uh, inhalation at uh, some burns. Pero wala pang detalye, wala pang mga pangalan na pire-release ang ano, uh, authorities. Darlene, as of the moment, firefighters are yet to put out the fire and authorities couldn't tell yet 
if it is already under control. According to survivors, the experience was truly tragic as many were trapped inside the building as the fire broke out in the middle of the night when everyone was fast asleep. Just spreading. Just spreading. It was all that cladding. I'm sure I'm sure the cladding hundred percent. I mean there's gotta be so many fatalities in this one that's just happened. I see the kids banging on the window screaming, it was it was horrendous. The kitchen started to fill with the smoke, so I had to run out through the building. Just grab my telephone and my passport and, and that's it. They don't let the call in the moment. Darlene London Fire Brigade Commissioner Danny Cotton confirms fatalities in the event. However, they are still not certain as to the number of deaths. As of the moment, around 50 individuals were sent in different hospitals due to injury, injuries from the fire. Darlene, an emergency number has been set up by the embassy for anyone concerned for loved ones of our compatriots in North Kensington Fire. Darlene relatives may visit the embassy's Facebook page for emergency numbers and embassy's email address for updates. We will continue monitoring the situation here. For now, that's the latest here in London. Back to you, Darlene. Thank you, Jovic. And that's Jovic Burmas reporting live from London, United Kingdom. A special investigation task group was created by the Philippine National Police in line with the shooting of an official of the Bureau of Internal Revenue this morning. Maki Libradilla tells us why. Police Chief Superintendent Guillermo Eleazar will head a special task group or SITG Enriquez formed especially to conduct an investigation on the killing of Alberto Enriquez Jr., the Chief Assessment Officer of the Bureau of Internal Revenue or BIR's Revenue District Office 28. This is a CCTV footage of a parking lot just several meters away from the BIR RDO 28 building. At around 7 in the morning, Enriquez can be seen coming out of his car. At the same time, the CCTV footage also captured two men on board a motorcycle seemingly waiting for someone. After several minutes, one of the men went near Enriquez and shot him. Police said a 9mm bullet killed the victim. Authorities are yet to determine the motive for the killing which they say might be work-related. According to a witness that na, na, we na natin before the na shooting incident, they were killed uh, ibang personality dito mukha na, na, na nandito kanina sa lugar isa rin po yan sa ating ano no isa rin yan sa ating alamin pa kung talagang uh, planado o ito ay uh, uh, related ba sa kanyang trabaho the colleagues of the victim refused to be interviewed on cam but said Enriquez never had a fight with someone and that he was a good worker. It can be recalled in November 2016, another official of BIR was killed in an ambush in Quezon City. Makili Bradilla, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The family of Bien Unido Mayor Gisela Boniel seeks the help of the Police Regional Office 7 in the ongoing investigation of her death. Aiko Miguel explains why. The family of murdered Bien Unido, Bohol Mayor Gisela Boniel, is seeking the immediate resolution of her case, where the primary suspect was her husband, a Bohol Provincial Board member, Nino Rey Boniel. Police Regional Office 7 Director, Police Chief Superintendent Noli Talino, says the sibling of Mayor Boniel went to their office yesterday. I was talking to my friends of Mayor Gisela Boniel kahapon. At uh, gusto lang nilang very private yung kanilang uh, concern dito sa, sa pagkamatay ng kanilang uh, kapatid. At uh, accordingly, ay, yun nga, naglulok sa rin sila at uh, gusto nilang ma-resolve kagad itong kaso na to. He says the family is waiting for the result of the investigation and is hoping that the remains of the mayor will be found. It was believed that her body was thrown at the seas of Kaubian Island in Lapu-Lapu City, Cebu. In line with this, the government of Bohol promised to help in the ongoing search and retrieval operations. Initially, uh, pinasa binatin doon sa kay provincial director that we need additional divers. Specifically, mga technical divers kasi malalim na yung... Several divers from Bohol are expected to join the search for the missing body of Mayor Boniel tomorrow. 
Meanwhile, the PRO7 is calling on the four remaining suspects to surrender to authorities. The PRO7 says it is ready to provide them security if they will testify for the case. For now, Riolito, Etad Boniel, and Randel Lupas are made witnesses for the case after they pointed out Nino as behind the killing of the mayor. This is a very welcome uh, move on their part dahil malaking tulong ito dito sa kaso na uh, sinampan natin kay uh, board member Boniel. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The Department of Justice investigates the alleged new illegal drug trading scheme inside the new Bilibid prisons. Monoxon tells us why. Department of Justice Secretary Vitaliano Aguirre II confirms that there's a new illegal drug trading scheme inside the new Bilibid prisons or NBP. Aguirre says they are currently investigating the matter to hold accountable the possible suspects. While we have controlled uh, the drug trade for the past uh, almost one year, I have received some reports that there is some sort of resurgence of uh, drug trade in the New Bilibid. Aguirre also says that aside from the formerly involved individuals, they are investigating new personalities that they believe are sneaking in illegal drugs inside the National Penitentiary. DOJ plans to seek the service of the Philippine Marines who are now assigned in Marawi. For the meantime, DOJ will augment its security manpower from the PNP Special Action Force to intensify its monitoring of the alleged entry of illegal drugs in the NBP. The DOJ replaces the jail guards every after six months to prevent corruption. The Justice Secretary says one of the reasons for the proliferation anew of illegal drugs is the huge sum of money being offered to jail guards. Talagang medyo malaking pera ang uh, pagdubong pag uh, nagpalakad na yung mga drug lords na yan kaya even the most honest of our PNP ay uh, nakukurapted. Meanwhile, President Rodrigo Duterte wasn't able to attend the 15th anniversary of the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency or PDEA earlier. The President sent Justice Secretary Aguirre to represent him in the event. PDEA touted that in just one year, it was able to confiscate more than 2,000 kilograms of shabu. The total take, the total uh, accomplishment on uh, the ng, uh, ng shabu during the uh, Duterte administration uh, has uh, has surpassed uh, three times that of uh, the of, of the previous administration. Uh, it has surpassed the three years accomplishment of the previous administration. Pidea also noted that its anti-drug operations continues amid the crisis in Marawi City. Pidea is investigating the source of the narco money allegedly funding the multi-terror group. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Department of Health is studying the possibility of issuing an ordinance that would prohibit the use of electronic cigarettes or vaping in the Philippines. Aiko Miguel explains why. The Department of Health targets to lower the number of youth smokers alongside the launch of the government's anti-smoking campaign. The implementation of the Executive Order No. 26 or the nationwide smoking ban will take effect on July 16. Aside from this, health officials are now studying the possibility of creating an ordinance that would ban the use of so-called vapes or electronic cigarettes. E-cigarettes are not covered by the EO. We're still getting the technical assistance from the World Health Organization kung paano natin totally ma, uh, gaya sa uh, cigarette smoking yung vaping ano, na ibaban natin siya. Providing the youth and the uh, smokers alternative na akala po ng youth at ng mga smokers it's safer, but there is no safe level of tobacco exposure. The DOH and World Health Organization, or WHO, say vape contains 7,000 kinds of chemicals which are also present in cigarettes and should not be used as an alternative to quit smoking. Even local government units like Manila is waiting for the release of a national ordinance that would prohibit vaping. We might have a question of law later, so we're waiting for the national DOH to, to really help us 
assist us in coming up with definite rules on vaping. Wala pa po kaming penalties and uh, not like with smoking. We just try to streamline the old, the old ordinances that we have. Earlier this morning, the DOH visited the FG Calderon Elementary School in Manila to warn the students of the dangers of smoking. With this campaign, the DOH together with DepEd will make crowds at school to post posters against the selling of cigarettes outside and nearby campuses. No smoking month at nakatutok po tayo sa mga kabataan na sana wag na silang magsimula. Say no to tobacco, best, wag magyosi, wag kadiri. Masama na rin po sa katawan niyo kaya hindi ko rin po sinusubukan. Mahirap na din pong magkasakit. Tres lang, tres po sigarilyo ang pagkakaalam ko. Tapos pag naninigarilyo po kayo, malaki, ma, malaking halaga po yung magagastos niyo po sa pag nagpagamot po kayo sa cancer po. Based on a 2015 Global Youth Tobacco Survey, the percentage of Filipino youth smokers aged 13 to 15 had increased. Each year, DOH is spending around 188 billion pesos for the treatment of smoking-related ailments. Meanwhile, the DOH will launch its quit line on June 19 for smokers who would like to seek help in quitting smoking. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. The Department of Labor and Employment calls on government agencies and civil organizations to strengthen the fight against child labor. Ray Pelayo will tell us why. The Department of Labor and Employment said there are around 2 million child laborers in the country, 68% of which are in the agriculture sector. Incidents of child labor are also recorded in construction, transportation sectors, and street trading among others. Dole points out poverty as a primary reason why at young age, children are forced to work. Currently, the government through the Department of Social Welfare and Development initiates livelihood projects to combat poverty and eventually stop child labor. In the Philippines, our commitment under the Philippine Plan of Action for Children is to uh, uh, remove child, 1 million child labor by 2025. Uh, the International Labor Organization calls on the attention of authorities to prevent child labor and protect children, especially in conflict areas and in times of disasters. ILO said around 70 million children are affected by natural disasters each year and around 250 million are living in areas affected by armed conflict globally. These are the common areas where children are prone to child labor, trafficking, sexual exploitation and abuse. Pag meron ding gulo, may evacuation, uh, hindi umaandar yung ekonomiya, nawawalan din ng trabaho at pangkabuhayan yung mga magulang at napipilitan din, uh, napipilitan din ang mga bata na tumulong. According to ILO, the law is sufficient to protect the children against child labor. What needs to be done is strict implementation. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Laverdad Christian School and College Scholars will surely enjoy this academic year. Leslie Longbowen will tell us why. With the aim to provide its students their academic and extracurricular needs, the administration of Laverdad Christian School and College added quality facilities this school year. Sa school year na to, parang ngayon namin ma-experience yung completion ng ng development ng building kasi magkakaroon kami ng additional floor na magagamit namin for our classrooms, computer laboratory, tsaka uh, library, pwera pa dun sa gymnasium, which is another floor yun. With the new gymnasium, students of LVCC Caloocan will now have their own venue for sports activities. Meanwhile, the most awaited auditorium of La Verdad, Pampanga is targeted to be fully operational this school year. The facility can accommodate more than a thousand people. The auditorium costs around 50 million pesos but will be available for free use of La Verdad scholars. The La Verdad Apalit Auditorium will be used for school's major events as well as for watching educational films, documentaries, and student productions. Yung auditorium na yun na talagang ipinanukala ni Brother Daniel, yun ang pinakamagandang auditorium dito so far sa buong Pampanga pag nayari. 
Actually, inaabangan na nga iyan ng mga taga rito sa regional office ng CHED, ng TESDA, ng DEPED. Tinatanong na nila kung tapos na yan kasi gusto rin nilang gamitin yung auditorium na yan. Apart from this, LVCS Apalit also constructed 13 additional classrooms for the opening of grade 12 this year. Each of the classrooms is equipped with a television as a learning tool. Among the facilities that are available for free to the scholars are science laboratories, healthcare simulation room, international cookery laboratory, libraries, and many more. Almost 3,000 scholars this year under the free education program of Brother Eli Soriano and Kuya Daniel Razon will benefit from the said facilities. Leslie Lombowen, UNTV News and Rescue, Apalit, Pampanga. Residents of Gitnang Bayan 1 in San Mateo, Rizal were delighted that staff and volunteers from UNTV and MCGI were able to render free medical services in their place. John Hano tells us why. Most residents of the coastal barangay of Gitnang Bayan 1 in San Mateo, Rizal are poor and their main source of income is fishing and shoemaking. Thus, they were delighted upon learning that a free medical mission will be conducted by the UNCV and members Church of God International in their area with the help of the local government Gitnang Bayan Uno. Despite the distance, Teodoro insisted to go with the help of some family and friends to take advantage of the free medical mission. Nearly 900 residents were assisted and availed various medical services. Among the services rendered were tooth extraction, eye checkup, free eyeglasses, and free vitamins and medicines. Others, however, were given advice for their legal problems. There was also a free physical therapy and massage. In a way, na may gagamutan to dahil la. As you can see, hindi ito basta-basta gamutan. Napakaraming uh, nag-benefits na tao. Uh, madali po mag-request sa aking mga katulad na mga pelo, barangay captain. Um, nag-request po ako, hindi ako napahiya. Sa sandaling mga panahon la ako nag-request, hindi naman umabot ng two months. Nag-grant yung request ko. John Nano, UNCV News and Rescue, Philippines. The DOJ Justice Boosters vow to bounce back after two consecutive losses in UNTV Cup off-season games. Bernard Dadis tells us why. Suarez. After two consecutive wins as UNTV Cup executive face-off kicked off in May, the DOJ Justice Boosters has tasted two consecutive losses in their last game this June. First was on June 4 when they were defeated by the Senate Sentinels at 84-87 and on June 11 by the PNP responders at 88-82. Thus, in their upcoming game against the BOC Transformers on Sunday, the DOJ will push even harder to recover. Although the BOC has not yet recorded any victories from its previous games, the boosters cannot be complacent, especially that the BOC has shown good plays during the first quarter of its recent game against Senate Sentinels. So hopefully, ma makapasok kami sa Final Four. Uh, susubukan ulit namin siya. Basta ilalaro lang namin kung yung nilalaro namin. Should the DOJ win, they will secure a 3-2 win-loss record and will advance to the playoffs. On the other hand, it will be the end for BOC. However, if the BOC wins, the DOJ would wait for the result of the game between the Judiciary Magis and Senate Sentinels. If Judiciary wins, they would have 3-2 win-loss record, while the Senate Sentinels would have 2-3 win-loss record tied with the DOJ. According to the UNTV Cup off-season games, win over the other rule, the DOJ would say goodbye from the league because the Senate defeated them on June 4 with the scores 84-77. But if the Senate wins and the judiciary is defeated, the Magis will exceed the league because the DOJ has defeated them during the May 21 opening games. Bernard Dunnies, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Those are the reasons behind the news, June 14, 2017. I am Angelo Castro III. 
Reasons we delivered to you as they unfold. I'm Darlene Basinga. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. Thank you for watching Why News. Service Channel.